Welcome back to Emergency Insights. I'm your host, James Carter, and joining me today is Dr. Karen Sue, a distinguished emergency physician with extensive experience in toxicology. Dr. Sue, thank you for being here. It's a pleasure, James. Thank you for having me. Today, we're diving into a topic that can be one of the most unpredictable and challenging in the emergency department, fencyclidine or PCP intoxication. Dr. Soup, for our listeners, can you briefly describe what PCP is and why it's such a concern in the ED? Absolutely. Fencyclidine, or PCP, is a dissociative anesthetic that was initially developed for human use but was quickly discontinued due to its severe side effects, including agitation and hallucinations. It's a significant substance of abuse, often known by street names like angel dust or rocket fuel. What makes it so challenging in the ED is its highly variable and unpredictable presentation. Patients can range from being completely catatonic to incredibly agitated and violent, posing a risk to themselves and to healthcare staff. That unpredictability is certainly a major factor. Let's get into the specifics of its action. What is the primary mechanism of action for PCP, and how does that explain the wide range of clinical signs we see? The primary mechanism is its action as a non-competitive NMDA receptor antagonist. Essentially, it blocks the flow of calcium and sodium ions through these channels in the brain. This interference leads to a cascade of effects on multiple neurotransmitter systems, including dopamine, norepinephrine, and serotonin. By disrupting these systems, it creates that dissociative state, a feeling of detachment from one's environment, as well as the well-known neurological and psychiatric effects like hallucinations, agitation, and a profound increase in pain tolerance. Fascinating. So the blockage of those receptors explains both the detachment and the increased pain tolerance, which can be a dangerous combination. Given this, what are the key components of the initial assessment and stabilization for a patient presenting with suspected PCP intoxication? The very first step is ensuring scene safety for everyone involved. The patient's behavior can be violent and unpredictable. After that, we follow the standard primary survey, assessing airway, breathing, and circulation. It's crucial to also perform a rapid neurological assessment, and importantly, check the patient's core temperature. Hyperthermia is a critical and potentially fatal complication of PCP use and can lead to rhabdomyolysis and multi-organ failure. I want to focus on that. The patient's presentation can be so intense that it's easy to miss some of the less obvious but life-threatening complications. Besides hyperthermia, what are some of the other acute complications we need to be vigilant for? Beyond hyperthermia, which is often the result of extreme muscle activity, we must be on the lookout for rhabdomyolysis a breakdown of muscle tissue that can lead to acute kidney injury. We also see severe hypertension that can lead to intracranial hemorrhage or stroke. And in high doses, respiratory depression is a risk. We need to continuously monitor for cardiac arrhythmias as well. The combination of hyperthermia, severe hypertension, and the potential for rhabdomyolysis makes this a true multi-system emergency. With a patient in a state of extreme agitation, our first instinct is often to reach for medication to calm them down. What is the preferred pharmacological approach, and are there any medications we should absolutely avoid? The mainstay of management is supportive care and reducing external stimulation by placing the patient in a quiet, dimly lit room. For pharmacological management, benzodiazepines are the first-line treatment for agitation and seizures. We typically use a fast-acting agent like lorazepam or diazepam. It's crucial to avoid phenothiazines, like chlorpromazine, because of their anticholinergic properties, which can worsen hyperthermia and complicate the clinical picture. While haloperidol may be considered in some cases, Benzodiazepines are generally the safer and more effective option for the initial management of agitation. Excellent advice. Finally, what about long-term prognosis? While we focus on the acute crisis in the ED, what are the potential long-term issues for a chronic PCP user? For a single acute intoxication, 
Most patients will recover completely within 24 to 48 hours with proper supportive care. However, for chronic users, the prognosis is different. We see a significant risk of memory impairment and persistent cognitive dysfunction. They may also develop speech difficulties and are at a higher risk for long-term psychiatric disorders, including chronic psychosis. This underscores the need for not just acute medical management, but also follow-up and referral to substance abuse counseling once they are medically stabilized. Dr. Sue, thank you for providing such a clear and concise overview of this complex topic. Your insights are invaluable for our audience of healthcare providers. My pleasure, James. It was great to be here. And that's all the time we have for today's episode of Emergency Insights. Stay safe, and we'll see you next time.